I genuinely believe that you guys are not giving this unit enough credit. We complain, myself as well, we complain about Masha getting immunity every single turn. El Sharion gives his entire team immunity every single turn. You could use him in turn one team, you could use him in turn two team. A lot of people are familiar with the team of him and the dark jack-o-lantern well this can be used in so many more situations also i think a lot of you don't remember entirely what his passive does he increases his attack speed he increases his attack power it's pretty brutal let's see him in action no idea why they first picked feng yan in the first round but they're going for so this is actually going to stack el shirian quite a bit so he's going to steal buffs from, well, he can steal buffs from Feng Yan too. He can steal buffs from Feng Yan. He can steal buffs from Riley. He can also get a lot of buffs from uh, Lyman. This is just this. I'm already calling it at the very beginning. El Sharion and Bulwark team is going to just absolutely destroy. So I mean, they did ban the Shizuka. I was gonna say he can. Uh, he gets extra damage from his uh, from the Shizuka buffs. Really, that's interesting. How that's not on the battlefield, but I still seem to think it is. Uh, okay. There's just, there's, there's no way. There's no way his opponent has any chance. I think that this was already, at the pick ban phase, this was already game. But, Shizuka first pick right into El Sharion and Water Ryu. They also have the Masha, so El Sharion is going to counter two units on that side. He also gets stronger with the Maya and the Wusa being on there. I thought that that was going to, I thought the pick ban phase was going to go a little bit differently. I thought that the Magnum was actually going to get banned. Although Bulwark, I mean, Bulwark kind of has to get banned. I guess, I guess in retrospect, Magnum is less dangerous than Bulwark. So we'll, s Magnum's going to take a turn right here. Suppressive fire. Okay. That's why they didn't ban out the, uh, the Magnum. I mean, Bulwark was going to just keep doing Bulwark things. Heal for, uh, 50%, 50 percent damage. And then also heal the entire team as well. Magnum's not quite at that level, but I guess they just expected RNG to be RNG. Magnum's going to take a turn. As soon as they get Magnum, I mean, Magnum's going to come back from the dead regardless. Because Shizuka and Nana. But as soon as they take Magnum down from the Nana stack, then he's not like Shiz Shizuka's going to bring him back but he's not going to get his passive right so passive does not activate when Shizuka brings him back into the ghost state I don't remember exactly the name of what it's called and that's kind of <laughs> insta revive and then they're just going to well yeah he can't really strip everything the robos strip actually better than the Ryu doesn't it because the guys didn't respect the Robos, then they get buffed. This next match is a little bit more what you expect to see when you think of El Sharion and RTA is the team with the Dark Jack-O-Lantern and Fran and everything is on Swift. Of course, Leo gets banned out. Leo is a hard counter to the entire team. Leo is a must ban in this, uh, in this instance. So... Let's see, he's gonna do so much damage. All those buffs, he's gonna increase his attack speed and his attack power, which his damage is based on attack speed and attack power. You usually don't see Theomars in this team. Theomars just uh, does just fine, but El Sharion is the real MVP. Look how much damage El Sharion did. First pick Praha here. Shizuka, El Sharion right into the Shizuka, very smart. Also has, he's gonna steal the buffs with uh, Ethna. Leo in there is gonna be really dangerous for the El Sharon because El Sharon's not really going to do a lot of damage although El Sharon is still going to count the counter the Shizuka is this going to be enough additional damage to take out the Diana looks like it is additional turn takes out the Molong it's trading one for one here Mega Smash which means immunity I wonder if she winds up going for the uh the revive and then El Sharon just winds up stealing it. I mean, El Sharon's really not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's just going to be the Oliver show. That's every season of RTA nowadays. After Oliver got his tri it was triple buffs in one balance patch, right? He's just going to steal that. He's just going to steal that. And almost kills. Yeah, GG. That's, that's, well, it might not be game. Gurkha first pick. You know what? I bet he's first picking Gurkha because he expects his opponents to double pick immunity into that and he's going to bring out El Sharion and Bulwark into that double immunity. I bet that that was the strategy all along for... I mean, obviously, that's the strategy. When you first pick something, you know your opponent is going to pick counters to it and then you know you need to have 
the counters to their counters already ready and ruined up. If you guys don't know, if you guys are like uh, early game, mid game, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. That's what you're supposed to do. So that's uh, you, you got to be a couple steps ahead. You have to know what your opponent's going to pick and then know what you're going to pick into their pick before they even pick it. So that's why it's sometimes nice to be off meta because then your opponent will not be ready for whatever you're picking. So gives the uh, gives you the element of surprise. I mean, the, the game will still be won by Violent Prox and it won't really matter, but it will give you the element of surprise. He didn't go for the... Well, he didn't go for the Wusa because he wants the... He wants the extra Prox from Gurkha. I wonder if that's going to come and uh, bite him later. Not going for the Wusa. I guess we'll find out. I'm just I'm just so used to I mean I guess it's a different style uh, different play style when you have Gurkha on the battlefield I don't have Gurkha so I'm not really too I don't have first-hand experience of hey don't take things down don't kill things because you want things to keep feeding Gurkha so that was an interesting that you usually don't see that combination of units same for his three picks as every other match of the entire so well, that's not that's not entirely true all right the Riley into the El Sharon. So El Sharon was picked first, and then they're like, hey, let me bring something that stacks El Sharon, because I kind of feel like uh, my opponent should win. <laughs> I kind of feel like my opponent should win. So they picked the Riley because Bulwark, right? They were going to pick the Riley Bulwark combination together. Bulwark is nice against the Masha because she's going to continue doing her immunity regardless, and that's going to stack him. So it's just odd to see the Riley against El Sharion. Like, El Sharion, he's already on the battlefield. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to pick something that uh, can potentially stack and give my opponent unlimited uh, immunity, unlimited attack power buffs. So, kind of uh, kind of interesting there. All right, Total Magic. Counter, attack power buff. Although, that's a, you know what? That's kind of that's kind of smart, though. With the, the Bulwark at the very least, right? Because Bulwark is a counter to... Everything's just countering each other, right? Bulwark is a counter to El Sharion. Bulwark is a counter to Masha. And then they just concede at that point. I mean, that was going to be... Because Nana was stacked twice. That was going to be basically six versus three. First picks, this is just El Sharion is waiting to be picked here. Because uh, there's so much buffs on the left-hand side. They're not going to ban out any of those buffs. Brings El Sharion. Brings Bulwark. I, I don't remember what I was what I was saying. <laughs> at the very beginning. Oh, I was going to mention that the Miles and the uh, the Masha. They're like, I want to pick Masha, but I also want to pick the counter to Masha. So I'm going to pick Miles in there together. So, yeah, let's see how counter. Is this going to be a triple revenge, uh, El Sharad? Or is this going to be? It's going to be so many buffs to steal. So many buffs. Brings Oliver back from the dead. Okay, this this not I mean that's just extra buffs for El Sharon to steal. And look at Bulvrick, he's gonna he's gonna go he gets stunned. I was gonna say he's gonna go nanners, but he he doesn't really go two nanners when he gets stunned. That's that's usually how that happens. Alright. Even if he even if he dies, he's gonna come back from the dead. So I'm surprised they didn't uh, they didn't try to strip that from the Bulvrick. It seemed like they were gonna try to take him down. ASAP. Invincibility, strips the invincibility, although, yeah, bye-bye Bulwark, comes back Bulwark, although he's got zero stacks. See, this is just, this is just beautiful, man. Oliver can't do too much over there, yeah. So Bulwark is down. He's close. This is going to be Masha Spotlight, isn't it? I'm kind of feeling like, oh, man. Well, you know what? Okay, so they lost, but it was still it was still a good El Sharon pick into all of those buffs. It was a little too much buffs. They got, like, that got stunned. Bulver got stunned. There were some clutch stuns that really, they, that could have gone the other way with different RNG, but that's just all of RTA. This is kind of an odd first pick for the right-hand side player is the first pick more and Sekhmet into a vertiheal. They're trying to outspeed and increase cooldowns on something, but there's vertiheal is a passive. So uh, it was just, maybe I'm the only one that thinks that, that was a little bit odd. Three LDs though, three LDs. And they ban out the fusion four star. So for all of you that are like, oh man, I need some LD. I mean, granted, I think that everyone that has played Summoner's War for a certain amount of time deserves to have some kind of fun LD. Um, 
but you don't need just crazy LD, 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 right? So that's the one, three LDs on the battlefield. The one that gets banned out is the Fusion 4-star. That was apparently the most dangerous one. So if they landed the, well, they did land the Oblivion, but if they, I was going to say, if they landed the Oblivion, that's just going to make El Sharon do more damage. So, although now it's not going to because, and they just concede at that point. Fast cleave teams on both sides. Leo, okay. Leo gets banned. I'm calling it now. Leo gets banned. Leo gets, of course he does. He counters the whole team. Everything does damage based on speed. So of course Leo gets, Leo, he's always going to get banned against that team. But now those of you are, that are watching this, you know, you know to just ban Leo. You're like, oh, okay. I'm just going to ban Leo in that instance. Oh, so much damage to that Lucian. Although, well, I was going to say Tableau could just, uh, it was a nice back and forth here. Ultimately, El Sharon team lost, but I really don't know what's going on. Oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on here. All right, bans out the Tessarion, bans out the Lexi. Bans out the Lexi, okay. <laughs> that's not that's not the one I thought was going to get banned out. What a wacky match. Okay, this is very, very interesting. Let's see, let's see if they're going to be able to... I, I wonder if this is going to be a long match, though. Heal block is not bad. Heal Black is, uh, heal, heal Block is not that bad. You know what, maybe they banned out the Lexi because Lexi was going to be a counter to both the Geldneer and the Riley. So I think that that's probably why they wound up banning the Lexi. They're like, you know what, I'm realizing now they were one step ahead of me. It took, it took me a second to figure that out. I'm like, okay, that's why. Because sometimes you use Lexi in, uh, in Guild Siege, but a lot of times you really can't, you really can't bring her in too much. So they do have Heal Block. And they also did have the uh, heal mitigation. If you guys don't know what Lexi does, she uh, she mitigates the amount of healing that the opponent can do. Well, she does a few different things. She also does ignore defense um, whenever the opponent heals a certain amount of times. And Riley just has to heal. Like, everything on the opponent's side was going to heal regardless. Geldner is going to passively heal. Riley is going to heal. Bulwark going to heal. Everything's going to heal. So Lexi was kind of a decent counter to that. It's just an odd, th odd thing to see banned. This is great. We get to see triple LD5s on the left-hand side. Tableau gets banned. Triple LD5s on the left-hand side. And some free-to-play friendly units on the right-hand side. So any of you that have not wailed $100,000 into this game, you should enjoy... That was so much damage! You should enjoy this match. Just, this is why farming runes. Farming runes and some of these units that... Like, the, the most expensive thing on the right-hand side was the Ethna. That's beautiful. And that... that um, the Water Striker was not going to do anywhere near enough damage to actually take... Like, the Ethna alone can just take him down. So, that's... that's GG. That's GG. What a wonderful match. Alright, guys, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. El Sharon is super underrated, super good unit in both a Bruiser team and a fast, aggressive, single-target damage snipe team. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you, as always, in the next one.